3D printing, the process of making three-dimensional solid objects from a digital file. It's changing how manufacturers everywhere think about design, prototyping, and production. But what is the next step? 4D printing. What is it? Where is it being used now? And what is its future? 4D printing has the potential for transforming advances in biotechnology and medicine, tissue engineering, chemotherapy, and self-assembling biomaterials. Medical devices such as stents and splints, orthodontic devices and implants that can grow with the patient are just some advances to come from 4D printing. Find out more now in Mechanical Engineering Magazine's special report. This video is sponsored by Comsol. See what is possible with multi-physics simulation. Biotechnology embraces 3D printing, but 4D solutions are just beginning their evolution. Rapid advancements in 3D printing that have fueled the development of advanced manufacturing applications are well known. New printing techniques and their ability to print objects from a growing variety of materials such as plastics, metals, ceramics, and more allow developers and manufacturers to speed prototyping, streamline supply chains, and produce complex designs not previously possible. Even so, there are limits to what can be done because the materials are rigid. What is the next step? 4D printing a term that is a bit of a misnomer because it still relies on 3D printers. Time is the element that pushes 3D to 4D, creating printed materials that change their shape over time. You first have to have 3D manufacturing capability, and then you add smart materials, said Howen Lee, an associate professor of mechanical and space engineering at Rutgers University. Smart materials have the ability to change shape over time creating a wide-ranging universe of potential new products. NASA has already produced woven metal fabrics that change shape and are foldable. Their potential use ranges from shielding a spacecraft from extreme temperatures to erecting an antenna in space. Airbus is investigating 4D printed components that could lighten the weight and improve the performance of aircraft. 4D printed healthcare applications may be the closest to commercial applications. Shape-shifting materials could be used for small, implantable medical devices, noted Lee. Tiny, soft devices could be inserted or implanted in people and harden when they reach the affected area. But with a few possible exceptions, wide-scale application remains years away. Most activity now is still in research and development the market is in its infancy. One survey by researchandmarkets.com puts the overall market for 4D printing in healthcare at a meager $9 million in 2021, rising to $32 million by 2026. In 2021, the medical and research models segment is expected to account for the largest share of the overall healthcare market. The ability of the 4D printing technology in manufacturing smart medical models will bring significant transformation in the medical field and will support the growth of this segment in the forecast period, according to the report. Yet, despite its small market size, emerging research shows that 4D printing could provide physicians and surgeons with new tools for everything from generating replacement skin to creating objects that respond to changes in their environment. First results. One example is work taking place at the Self-Assembly Lab at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Using Autodesk's Cyborg software and Stratasys 3D printers, it has been developing materials for more than five years that change shape when triggered by water. Another is Lee's lab at Rutgers, which uses a customized 3D printer to create plastic polymer metamaterials that change shape with heat. 
Skylar Tibbetts runs MIT's Self-Assembly Lab and may be the first to delve into what is now called 4D printing. In 2013, he declared an unprecedented revolution taking place at the micro and nano level to program physical and biological materials to change shape and form. The lab is working towards self-forming structures to eventually impact infrastructure and construction. It just might be the manufacturing technique that allows us to produce more adaptive infrastructure in the future, he said. Perhaps the earliest successful applications will come in the areas of tissue regeneration or regenerative medicine. 3D systems, Stratasys, and other printer manufacturers see the segment growing over the next few years and are working with biotech and bioprinting firms eager to adapt the technology to processes and production. Bioprinting is a process of printing materials with living cells, most often for product testing and further out reconstructive surgery. Because the printed objects contain living cells, they grow and morph into living tissue over time. Poietis a French bioprinting firm developing its own 4D printing platform was the first to commercialize a bioprinted synthetic skin, Poya skin. Poyetis is still a long way from providing skin tissue for reconstructive surgery, but its 3D printed skin has found a place in cosmetic testing, exploiting the movement condemning and in some cases outlawing the use of animals for testing. In 2018, it signed an agreement with Servier a pharmaceutical company, to develop a 4D bioprinted liver model to better predict drug toxicity. The firm's next-generation bioprinting platform features high-resolution, laser-assisted printers with software that controls the 3D organization of cells with cell resolution. It uses automation and robotics to guarantee reproducible tissue manufacturing, giving the printed tissue the functionality required by researchers. The multimodal platform includes bioextrusion, microvalve bioprinting, along with laser-assisted bioprinting, working with online sensors and machine learning algorithms to ensure that what is designed is printed. For 4D applications, the firm looks to its laser-assisted bioprinting technique. It uses laser pulses sent every nanosecond to deposit microscopic drops of bio-ink loaded with cells onto a cartridge. The software controls the ejection as well as droplet volume to accuracies close to a picoliter. Poetis claims it can achieve 20 micrometer resolution at speeds up to 10,000 droplets per second, assisted by a six-axis robotic arm. Finally, the company claims it is developing new software to program tissue self-organization to anticipate the evolution of bioprinted construct with time. The step that moves the platform to 4D printing. Back in the lab. While commercial 4D applications and products remain distant, there are flurries of work being done in university labs and research centers. One new technique, developed by researchers in Australia and New Zealand, combines a new 3D printing method with photo-controlled living polymerization, a chemical process that creates polymers. The technique, called PET raft, for photo-induced electron energy transfer reversible addition fragmentation chain transfer produces long polymer molecules using visible light rather than heat. Temperatures above 40 degrees Celsius kill cells, but the new process works in ambient temperatures that may provide greater viability. That could allow the process to be used in tissue engineering or other biomedical applications. Controlled polymerization has never been used in 3D and 4D printing before because the rates of typical controlled polymerization processes are too slow for 3D, 4D printing, where the reaction must be fast for practical printing speeds, said Cyril Boyer, co-director of the Australian Centre for Nanomedicine School of Chemical Engineering at the University of New South Wales, Sydney. After two years of research and hundreds of experiments, we developed a rapid process compatible with 3D printing. In contrast to conventional 3D printing, our new method of using visible light allows us to control the architecture of the polymers and tune the mechanical properties of the materials prepared by our process. This new process 
also gives us access to 4D printing and allows the material to be transformed or functionalized, which was not previously possible. Boyer's team demonstrated how functionalization could create a 4D material by modifying a commercial 3D printer and using it to produce a material that changes shape in water. The next step is to print more complex polymers and create objects that respond to different stimuli. Commercialization While most 4D projects are still trying to overcome obstacles to commercialization in the lab, some startups have also gotten into the game. In Belgium, Jan Schruten co-founded Antleron to turn cells into personalized therapies and tissues. Last year, the Leuven-based firm and printer manufacturer 3D Systems began to collaborate on furthering bioprinting solutions for regenerative products. To do this, Antleron's CEO Schuten is establishing the Living Therapy Factory. By definition, it will be a digital factory. It will be a modular complex using a combination of 3D printers, bioreactors, biomaterials, and biologics, he said. It is streamlined for a manufacturing workflow that is controlled with a matching quality control system to mitigate risks. The goal is to develop new, structured workflows for the company's core technologies to turn cells in therapies. 3D Systems, which has invested in Antleron, brings printers and a portfolio of 21 biocompatible materials along with its 3D Sprint and 3D Expert software and other equipment to the arrangement. There's a combination of engineering material and original natural material, and we're looking for ways to make that printable," said Schruten. The agreement helps enable Antleron to customize materials and optimize printing strategy. Bioprinting and regenerative medicine are a newer trend in 3D printing, said Chuck Hull, 3D Systems co-founder and chief technology officer. The firm first stepped into the field with an earlier agreement with United Therapeutics, which is working to build a transplantable lung. It poses a lot of cell biological questions, but also 3D printing questions, Hull said. They produce human collagen, and our printing inks are collagen-based. We print scaffolds to be infused with living cells, so it has been a great learning experience. Because of our progress there, there are a lot of other tissues we could handle. But for 4D applications, it is still early, Schruten said. Once researchers print a successful object, they then have to show they can do it reproducibly. After that, they have to show that they can print at volume and overcome medical and regulatory hurdles. When this will be a bona fide clinical business is not well defined, Hull said. Developments coming out of university and R&D labs will push the development of 4D printing technology and 4D materials. While that is happening, the next phase will come into greater focus, realizing performance standards and meeting regulatory compliance. In a few years, the first applications will be there, said Schruten. We will see proof of concept. There's still a lot of work with standards. There's a lot of research being done on the millimeter scale, but you need to make it in volume. So getting to commercial will take more time. <laughs>